Hi, I'm Paul Sherratt, the founder of Glove Glue. Hi, I'm Martin Brennan, the owner of DG UK. And together we bring you Developing Goalkeeping, a series of tips, chat, podcasts, YouTube videos, really trying to talk about improving and developing your game. So without further ado, let's crack on. What are we talking about today? We're going to give you some tips on how to improve your game, basically giving you four simple in steps to improve it. So, okay, so we're talking about the mental side. Um, I guess the first place to start is sort of before the game. Uh, what do I do? Is it, when does it start? Does it start the night before? Does it start in the dressing room? Does it start on the drive? Does it start in the warm-up? Where do, where do we sort of start this whole mental approach? I think everyone's, uh, I think everyone's different, aren't they? It depends on um, you know, the sort of person you are and the character you are. I think some, some uh, you know, prepare the night before. Um, some won't allow themselves to prepare the night before. They want to just chill out and relax. Um, some will, you know, the minute they wake up, they're on it and they're preparing. Yeah. Um, for me, as long as they're getting mentally prepared and physically prepared as they turn up to the game um, on match day, that, that's where I would do it. I, I wouldn't recommend trying to prepare for too long and trying to get in a mental state for too long. Um, you know, if, if it's the night before, you're still thinking about, you know, dealing with the kids, getting them to bed and... I think it's really healthy. A trigger point for me would be whether it's a home game, you turning up in your own car, and the minute you pull into the ground, right, now we're on it. This is where you know we, we've got to start thinking about the game. Um, but, but everyone's different. So I'm walking in, I'm switching on, I'm walking in the dressing room. I guess maybe some people have their own routine and have their own, their own kind of way of doing things. Mm. You've been in a lot of dressing rooms over the years. You must have seen some interesting stuff, the ways that some keepers yeah. kind of get themselves in the zone. Yeah, yeah. I've seen some people, you know, I've seen some goalies, you know, walk in, put their headphones in and that's it. Don't talk to me until we go out for the game. Um, some of the lads walk around, you know, uh, taking a pee out of each other. Um, some like pulling lads' trousers down and messing about, you know. It's a feel-good factor. As long as they feel good and they're in their own little zone, yeah. you know, that, that, that's great. Um, but everyone is different. Um, probably the most surreal one I've seen, and, and the most effective one, if you like, um, for the individual was was Tom Heaton. We had when um, I was on uh, uh, doing the first team at Wickham. We had him on loan from obviously from Man United to Wickham. We played Oldham away. I think it was Oldham away. And um, come into the dressing room, and uh, he'd walked in. No head. I don't think he had any headphones on. Tom, to be fair, he, he liked to talk and communicate with people. And interact, and uh, anyway, he's gone missing for about four or five minutes. I can't find him in the dressing room, so I've looked, walked around the showers. He's in, he's in the shower, but he's sitting on a, one of the ice boxes. But he's playing one of them. Um, I think it was either a Nintendo. I think it was a Nintendo DS. Right. I can't right. say Game Boy because I think Game Boy was just going back way too far. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he's not that old, same as me. Um, but yeah, he was playing a Nintendo DS. So I'm thinking, right, what do, what do I do here? Do I join in and play, you know, <laughs> join up with him with a Sonic Hedgehog yeah, that he's playing? Yeah, two player. I have yeah. no idea what's going on. Yeah. So I'm thinking, I've got to ask him. Like, he's really approachable. Top, top guy. So I went, Tom, what, what are you sort of doing? Do you have interest? And he went, I'm playing like a game. It switches on your brain and it starts switching on your eyes and opening up your eyes. And I'm like, this is phenomenal. Like, I've never seen the dressing rooms I've been in. I've seen lads, you know, doing their, picking their toenails and like really random stuff. But he was preparing himself... He was preparing for the warm-up, and then he'd go into the warm-up for the warm-up to prepare for the game. It was un it was incredible. And, and, is it, and is it, you know, it's not visualization for in that context. But is there an element of visualization coming into the game? Is there a point? Like a certain players would do this. They'll they sit and they'll think through. How they, you know, what might happen in the game is is, is that or, or do they do that in the warm up? When do they sort of when does that happen? I think the younger, from my experience, I think the younger ones, the older ones, will start try and push it aside. Right. And that, listen, I've been here many times. I know what's coming. You know, I'm either catching it or I'm not. I'm coming for the cross or I'm. They've been for it loads of times. I think they try and push it aside and leave the the mental side for a little bit closer to the match. I think the younger goalies, you can see headphones. There's a trend now, headphones in, um, zoning yeah, a out. Sport, a lot of sports, actually. Load, yeah. Exactly. So we're just going to try and... Um, I want to try and zone in now. You know, I think I don't think there's a right and wrong way. I think there's a way that you find um, and you, you, you sort of veer off that way. 
Um, but then, you know, they might, you know, the listeners may know this or not know this, but what normally happens when you turn up at ground uh, to give the kit people a chance, the kit lady or kit man a chance to set up, they'll send, you know, the manager will send them out onto the pitch, um, which gives the goalie, for me, an opportunity to go and stand in the goal, offence, and start feeling, getting that feeling yeah. of, right, what's around, you know, is is um, the obvious one, right, is the conditions. Is it stupidly windy? Yeah. Um, yeah. Most goalies I've ever worked with, the first thing they do when they wake up in the morning is go straight to the window, open the window and go, is it windy? That's the main thing that they'll go and find out. And it's amazing how many goalies do that. Right? It's going to be a Massive yeah, for goalies, absolutely. yeah. Through yeah. balls, crosses. Yeah. And um, so one, anyway, once they go out, they'll start getting a feeling of it. Um, but that's that's my now I've become a li- obviously we'll get older, but now I've come older in the coaching side of it. That's for me an opportunity for the goalie to start visualising what they could potentially be doing in the game. You know, stand in the goal and visualise yourself coming for a cross. Don't have to physically go and do it, but just see yourself coming. Just see your foot patterns going. I think I think it reminds me. I think back in the day. I think was it was it David James, didn't I uh, wasn't that the ultimate Portsmouth. visualization yeah. something he was yeah without a ball or something I don't know yeah. tell, tell me the story I can't and remember. again for any 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 you know if if you're a goalkeeping freak which I love yeah. my whole world's goalkeeping yeah so if you're goalie freak or you're a goalie you, you kind of should know this story he played for Portsmouth came out for the warm up started his physical preparation and then. And then started to continue his warm up without the ball. So he's catching it, he's coming for crosses. Pretend, catching it, pretending. Yeah, yeah. So in the warm up to him, he's like 10 out of 10. Yeah, I can't do any better. Yeah. I've caught everything. What a play, play and, blind. Uh, yeah. But he'd obviously had, he's obviously had this, this, this thing in his head and he's gone right. I've obviously been here so many times. I've played so many games. Let's mix it up. Let's see what I can do different to get the extra edge. And was it an age thing where he's going, I don't need to do so much physical work now. Let's just get me in a mental frame of mind. And I think it's a, I think it's a brilliant idea. Well, maybe he was brilliant of, idea. Maybe he's ahead of the curve. I mean, that must have been yeah. 10 plus years ago. Yeah, it would have been. And you see it now. You see it in sports now. You see, I don't know, the skiers. Yeah. And they're visualising their mm-hmm. two-minute run. Or you see, oh, you're a golfer. You've seen the golfers. Yeah. I mean, you, even an amateur golfer, mm. I'm, a, I'm a pretty bad hacker, but even I'll do a few practice swings to try and yeah. visualise. I guess it's the same principle. I mean, Exactly the same. Whether it's, the, whether it's putting, whether it's, you know, the, the biggest thing, for, the one for me is on, on the tee box. You know, everyone always gets, whether you're playing with a mate you've known for 20 years yeah. or someone you know for 10 minutes, yeah. there's always that edgy feeling of, especially on the first tee, yeah. don't shank the first one. And um, How do you get on with water? Well, because don't forget, there's water on the right. Yeah, <laughs> I've played a few courses where you you play for the first that's time. That's where it's going. And you don't it's know. Going in there. Yeah, going in there. But you don't know there's water on the right. And yeah. then just put your head down. One of the lads goes, you know, there's water on the right. And they know what they're doing. Of course they do. You know do. what I mean? They of know. They do. They've timed it perfectly. The minute you go that with your head down, yeah. water on the so you now go right. I now got to look back up. Please don't hit in the water. You kind of you're visualising yourself hitting it yeah. into the water. Yeah. So it's like, well, let's reverse that. And one of the things I always use was with a visualization, especially in golf. Um, and I've made a mind told me this: look to visualize something in a far distance. So it might be the the highest tree. You might see the highest tree. So instead of visualizing the fairway, look at that highest tree and aim for that highest tree. Because if you can set it off there, it's great. And it's exactly the same with the uh, the goal kicks, you know. Picture yourself looking at the flag, uh, the corner flag. Yeah, it's really Aim good. for the corner flag. Don't worry about pit hitting an air. Aim for the corner flag, and that, that you know you, you, your focus is so much so much stronger in hitting something further in the distance. And I, and I guess this whole kind of approach to the game is all about being in that zone. Is all about that focus. So, so let's recap. So I've so I've had. Maybe I prepped the night before, but I've driven to the ground. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling confident. I've done the, done the same thing. I've done my dressing room prep. I've been yep. on my Game Boy on my yeah. Switch or whatever yeah. it is these days, and, and, I, and I've done my thing. I've, I'm in the right zone. Maybe I've got my headphones on. Yeah. I've come out. I've done my warm up, with or without the ball, depending on who you are. <laughs> um, I've done a bit of visualization. So I'm I'm prepped. I'm good. How do I carry that into a game? What what happens in the game? How do I stay focused? Because, you know, as a keeper. I might only touch the ball five times, six times, ten times. Yeah. So there's a lot of period where I'm not 
involved, not necessarily involved in the game. How do I mentally stay strong and focused? Because that that presumably is is vital. Yeah. So one one thing I work on with the young ones um, is uh, and try to get them to understand this is concentration. And how do you get young, especially young goalies, really to yeah. continue that concentration through the game? Yeah. Um, so for me, the biggest, the, 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 biggest um, the biggest thing I get them to focus on is the communication in games. You know, if you can, if you can communicate in games, it keeps you involved in the game. You stay interactive with, interactive with the game. Um, and as you're communicating and talking, I think it stops your brain, allowing your brain to start veering off to other things. You know, so, but, but as I, I remember playing in a game when I was younger and, um, you know, I start thinking about, you know, balls at the other end, I start, start thinking about like a shopping list. Yeah. Like I need to get some stuff yeah. in the flat and I need to, you think, what are you doing? Yeah. You need to come back, get, no, 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 come back. And I, then, yeah, sorry, I, I noticed, um, I'm not a coach, you know, I'm not, I'm not even a goalkeeper. Mm. I stood behind Aaron Ramsdale at the weekend at the Emirates yeah. and I noticed that maybe it's just because it was in front of me and maybe I, Probably because I'm around goalkeeping, I noticed the goalkeeper more. But I noticed the whole, the whole match. Yeah. He was doing exactly what you just said. Now, okay, maybe he's on a high at the moment because he's, you know, because he's on a level and he's on the up. But he's completely engaged for the fo- for the full 90, 90 minutes. So I guess that's the epitome of it, isn't it? Is being at that level and yeah. just being in it and directing and shouting and thinking and planning, even if you're not physically touching the ball. Yeah. You're involved in the game mentally, and I guess physically to some extent, because I guess he's keeping himself warm as well. It was a cold day. But it's part of the position. For me, it's a massive part of the position, and it's overlooked. I think it's overlooked a lot, um, because I said it, it does keep you in the game. And, um, you know, I do, obviously I do, I do a lot of work with my own boy at the minute, and in the last two, two years, we've worked a lot on communication. Yeah. So when the ball's at the other end, his trigger point for when the ball's at the other end is to focus on his defenders and get his defender, defenders organised. So if they leave two strikers up, how's he going to structure that? You know, he's going to try and get them two marked up and maybe get uh, uh, another defender in front of them two. So if the ball comes out, his defender gets there before the two strikers get there. You know, and it's become. I, I think it's a massive part of the game that's well overlooked, and we yeah. need to, especially with the young ones, because people say, "Oh, you can't, you can't do that with young kids." You know, you can't get. No, you can get to that. You can do that with young kids. Yeah. You know, and I had a little spell at, at Orient when my boy was there uh, for the third time at Orient, um, going back for the third time, working with the academy goalies, and you know we had the under eights and ni- uh, sorry, under nines, tens, and eleven goalies all communicating through the game, and it was like, how do you stay in the game? Right, let's give you five things that you're going to say. Yeah. They'd forget four of them, yeah. but it wasn't important. They were talking through the game and they were staying engaged in the game. You know, so. It's it's something that every goalie should work towards. Why the ball's at the other end? Because yeah, what you're doing most of the game, most of the game, you're standing and you're analysing what's going to happen or potentially going to happen next. You, you know, um, I'd, I'd like to look at that actually to see how many minutes you physically, as the goalie, yeah. have got contact with the ball. Yeah, yeah. I'd only imagine it's probably less than six minutes. Yeah, I bet even less than that. <laughs> I bet it's even less than that. Which is crazy. Yeah. But then in training sessions, we're constantly on it and catching and catching. Yeah. But we don't actually do something where we go, right, you're not going to touch ball for 12 minutes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you're going to do something. How do you really deal with that? Actually. And obviously that's where the, the top-level goalies get to that level. 